Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Charlie Neese and welcome to Hot Spot Weather. This is where we take a look at a few of the weather hot spots across the country. It is the 22nd of November, 2025. And look, I know there are a lot of weather channels you could be visiting right now. Appreciate you spending some time right here with me on Hot Spot Weather. So where are the weather hot spots? Well, the first area, we're gonna be seeing a chance for some strong to severe thunderstorms across Texas as we go out of the weekend into the first part of Thanksgiving week. And that will be spreading off toward the east after that. And then we also are gonna be seeing at least two waves of cold air over the next 10 days. It's gonna be affecting the northern and eastern parts of the country. I'll talk more about that here in just a moment, turning substantially colder in many cases. All right, the Storm Prediction Center, the forecast for severe weather, it doesn't have any severe weather forecast for today, again, the 22nd of November, but it does have general thunderstorm areas from the North Carolina coast down to the Gulf Coast and Southern Texas, and then back into the Four Corners region. We've got one storm system up front pushing off into the Atlantic and into the Gulf. Meanwhile, a new system comes into the Four Corners region. Now, as we head into your Sunday, there's a level one out of five risk for severe weather, mainly hail and gusty winds across parts of Texas. And then as we head into Monday, that shifts to the east from Texas, Arkansas, parts of Mississippi, and northern Louisiana. So the weather will be turning more active as we head into the second part of the weekend and into the beginning of Thanksgiving week. As far as the jet stream is concerned, this is really a pattern that tells the story of why we've been seeing a lack of cold air, except for New England. New England's had a couple of shots of pretty cold air the last few days. But notice how there's a northern branch and a southern branch of the jet stream. The jet stream is divided. The jet stream has to merge into one branch before we really start to see good chances of Arctic air intrusions. And it does look like that's going to be happening as we head right into Thanksgiving. I'll show you that here in just a moment. But again, here's your most active storm system on the map for the weekend as it pulls out of the Pacific across northern Mexico into the Four Corners. This is what's going to be giving us an area of rainfall for Saturday into Sunday across the desert southwest. And we've seen some flooding places like Las Vegas over the past week. And we're going to be seeing that move off toward the east. It gives that chance of severe weather Sunday into Monday across parts of Texas and then a little farther east on Monday across parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. And once that system pushes off toward the east, notice how instead of two branches of the jet stream, they merge into one. Now we've got a chance and an opportunity for Arctic air to dive south. This is Wednesday. This is going to be a big travel day. And notice this big trough. We've got cold air dumping into the northern and eastern parts of the country. It's going to be much colder than it has been for Wednesday. And then on Thanksgiving Day, this is Thanksgiving morning into noon central time on Thanksgiving Cold air is flooding in again to the central and eastern parts of the country. It's going to be windy. The good news is the most active weather affecting travel looks to be Wednesday and early Thursday, but much of Thanksgiving Day itself, while it's going to be much colder than it has been, looks also to be calmer than Wednesday. And I'll detail that here. This is the global forecast system. This is the GFS, the American model, taking a look at what its forecasting will be happening as we head through Thanksgiving. Here is your active weather coming out of the Pacific. Notice how it moves off toward the east, spreads the rain and some higher elevation snows across the Four Corners region. I'll detail that in more detail here in just a moment. Much of the country, though, is calm on the 22nd. The 22nd is Saturday, so the beginning of the weekend is calm, and then we go into Sunday. This is Sunday morning, 6 a.m. Central Time. Pretty calm across the country and pretty mild, too. Not quite as warm as we were earlier in the week, but it's not too bad overall. Then as we head into Monday, there's your chance of severe weather Sunday into Monday across parts of Texas, Arkansas. That shifts off toward the east, so now we get Tennessee, Louisiana, and Mississippi into the act. This, this right here, though, that is the beginning of wave one of cold air that we're going to be seeing over the next couple of weeks. It's bringing snows across the upper Rockies. And as we go through time, notice 
how that cold air starts to spill down across the country. So here we go into Wednesday. This is Wednesday at noon central. We've got snows breaking out across the Great Lakes, a big punch of much, much colder air coming through the plains into the eastern part of the country. Showers and thunderstorms on the leading edge of the front that's bringing that cold air. And so travel trouble spots potentially from Birmingham to Atlanta and along the East Coast as this system moves off toward the east. This is Wednesday evening. You can see along the East Coast, some of the big cities, New York, also back into parts of New Jersey, Boston, down into around DC, we're gonna be seeing the potential for some delays in travel as the showers and thunderstorms move off the East Coast. And there's your big batch of cold air that continues to settle in as we go deeper into Thanksgiving Day. But notice the absence of lots of rain and snow, except for New England. It's going to be cold, blustery with snow showers on Thanksgiving and along the areas up around the Great Lakes, more lake effect snows. And it's going to be windy on the backside of that low as that cold air dives in across the eastern part of the country. The central plains back into the Rockies, though, calm on Thanksgiving Day and also across the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys. It's calm, just colder, but all the precipitation is mainly going to be east and to the north. So Thanksgiving Day itself is going to be calm for travel for the most part after the morning rains along the east coast. But this is another fairly quick shot of cold air because as we head into the weekend, it starts to warm again across the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, the deep south, back into the southern plains. But look what's happening Saturday night into Sunday. This is wave two. This is a strong wave, and it's going to be bringing more snow with it, especially across the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest as we go in through next weekend. This is Sunday into Monday of next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend. Just a preview though, showers and thunderstorms along a strong cold front. Could be some severe weather or locally heavy rains with that. And this is going to be right as we end November and begin December, the weekend after Thanksgiving. But another big shot of cold air coming and it's going to stay active. And then we're going to be seeing potentially more in the way of big rains and big storm systems as yet more cold air comes in after that with wave number three. So that's what I mean by the fact it's going to be getting much, much more active. Here's the way it looks though on a closer inspection with that severe threat over parts of Texas. This is Saturday. We've got some showers and thunderstorms mainly along the coast. Then as we head into Sunday, things turn a little bit more active. Let me turn on the longer range view of what's gonna be happening here. And so as we work into Sunday, showers and thunderstorms are becoming more numerous. This is where we start to see that risk of severe weather Sunday into Monday. And from Oklahoma down into Dallas, over toward Little Rock. Some of this rain will be locally heavy, but again, on this side of it, the south side of all that, can't rule out some isolated, severe weather. So here's the way it looks a little farther to the east across the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys. We did have some rain in the morning for parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, but those rains pretty quickly shift east. So much of Saturday, the 22nd, and Sunday, the 23rd, will be calm and will be dry. We could see a few scattered spotty showers across the deep south as that front continues to slowly sag south and stall out, but nothing substantial here. Now here is where I want to mention that we could be seeing some heavy rains. This is Saturday as Saturday develops into Sunday, especially Sunday as that area of low pressure comes off the Pacific and then moves into the Four Corners region. We're going to be seeing some rains and snows break out across parts of Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and also into Utah. Some of these bands of snow could be locally heavy at times. Nothing too crazy, but look out for this to potentially affect travel mainly in the higher elevations. Could see some snow showers around Denver, also around Santa Fe as well with areas of rainfall on either side of the snowfall. And again, that's the system that's gonna be pushing into Southern Texas, giving us that chance of some thunderstorms that are severe as we head into Sunday and then a little farther east on Monday. What about temperatures? Well, temperatures staying mild for the next couple of days before the really cold air starts to drop down. This is during the day on Saturday into Sunday, starting off the weekend very warm. Sunday will be fairly warm as well. You can see middle 50s 
and 60s for places like the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, down to the Gulf Coast, 70s and 80s. Texas, back into the 70s, 80s along the Gulf Coast in Texas. But 60s and even middle 60s soaring into the central and northern plains right ahead of the chilly air that comes in as we head into starting Monday, but it really gets going Tuesday. Notice that cold air dropping down. And now by the time we head into Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, as the afternoon temperatures show here, we're only in the 20s across the Northern Plains, only in the 20s and 30s across the Great Lakes, went from the near 70 degree readings down into the 50s for places like Tennessee, 40s, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, back into Kansas, and as we go deeper into the Thanksgiving holiday itself, temperatures during the afternoon, again, teens even for the Northern Plains, 20s and 30s for the Great Lakes, 40s now for much of Tennessee, Kentucky, 30s and 40s, Texas still holding in the 60s. That's the core of the coldest air is sliding just to the north and east of there. And there's a lot more cold air, though, if you'll notice up through Canada, that cold air is building. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview because as we head into Friday night and into Saturday, temperatures are going to briefly start warming up again a little bit. But let me show you. Here comes the big, this is the leading edge of the second wave of cold air. And look how it drops as we head into the first week of December. Now we're talking about some really, really cold air, middle of the day temperatures in the single digits to below zero through the Rockies, only in the single digits and teens and 20s through much of the plains. This is on the 1st of December at uh, in the middle of the afternoon. You've got some warm air ahead of it. You're going to have a battle zone in between, so look for some active weather. This would be Monday after Thanksgiving. You can see how that cold air just continues to shoot down to the south. This is Tuesday, the 2nd of December. Look at that cold air blasting through the Rockies, blasting into the plains. This is Tuesday morning temperatures in the teens below zero potentially. And again, there's your big battle zone between the Arctic air and the much, much warmer air. But that Arctic air will continue to overtake much of the country as we head into the first week of December. So now with that, the Climate Prediction Center is showing that big area of below average temperatures now from November 29th to December 5th. And after that, that below average area is likely to be even farther east. So the pattern is going to flip after some very mild to warm weather. We're going to start to see more and more in the way of Arctic air intrusions from Thanksgiving on into the first few weeks of December. It is going to be much colder on average December than we've been, so just know it's coming and prepare for it. Hey, thanks for visiting me here on Hotspot Weather. If you are interested in severe weather safety plans and developing those for your family, check out my YouTube shorts where I cover a lot about tornado safety and stay tuned here. I'll keep you updated on the much colder air coming in.